What's up guys, welcome to Supercars of London and welcome to part two of my BMW M3 collection. I've pulled over in this lay-by. I've literally just signed off from the first video, the collection at Redline Specialists. And Alex is in the car with his shoes off because the interior on this car is a little bit bright and I do not want to get it dirty. We have got over 350 miles, I think, to get back to London. So it is gonna be my first opportunity to get some real miles and experience behind the wheel of the BMW M3. Work out whether it's good on fuel, work out whether it's got an epic performance and is a lot of fun to drive, and start thinking about some of the modifications that I'm gonna to do to this car. But first things first, I'm gonna get this car de-chromed. Um, but I'm gonna jump into the uh, car now, and we're gonna get on the road. So uh, follow me. I hope your shoes are still off. Uh, of course they are. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't have pulled over in this lay-by. The one thing that I'm really have to gonna have to get used to is just whether this car um, is good at getting over speed bumps or going through potholes because the UK has got tons of them. And here we go, first acceleration. Let's um, start mucking around with, oh, I'm already in Sport Plus apparently. Oh my god, this is the coolest thing ever. We have just left Redline and are making our way back down south. It's a long old, it's a long old journey back down south, but I do not care. I do not care one bit. I am in my brand new, not brand new, it's a 2015 um, BMW M3 and there's no beating around the bush. This is one of the coolest cars that I have owned. It is just unbelievable. I'm just looking around it now and there's so much stuff that's totally unfamiliar to me that I'm just gonna have to get used to this car, but we've got a good four hour journey back down um, to get used to it, to start fiddling around with some buttons. Ah, oh, the steering is so weighted. Oh my God, like my Audi had very light steering, obviously being for, for perfect for the city. This, it just feels like a lot more driver focused. BMW M3, a flagship car in the BMW history. And I just can't believe that I'm now sort of gonna be a part of it and gonna be experiencing such an awesome car. And yeah, I just, I'm blown away. I'm blown away. The guys at Redline, have smashed it out of the park. Um, and I mean, the stock that they have is just insane. So, oh no, how do I do this indicator stuff? And now I'm indicating left, I need to go right. This car feels planted. This is a proper performance sports saloon. This is not a hatchback. This is a, this is a proper car and I'm scared to put my foot down because this car, the wheels tend to spin up. It's got all of the power to the rears, I'm nervous. But this car's got cruise control, so I'm just gonna cruise on down back to London. I will continually update you on how I'm feeling, which I can imagine will all the time be very excited, very happy, and overwhelmed at the fact that I'm driving this car. What a beast, what a beast! And I'm just gonna sit on the outside lane now and cruise. I'm using my indicators. There has been a bit of a stereotype that BMW drivers don't tend to use um, indicators but I'm using my indicators more than enough because I don't really know how they work. <laughs> oh, look at the seats! Just insane! which I feel very smug about because I can just cruise on the owl. And uh, to be honest, there's not that many people along the road, so it's very nice. The heads-up display is actually incredibly helpful. It just picked up that the temperature is below three degrees, meaning beware of ice. That's pretty impressive. 
first impressions of this car just driving it on the motorway, I haven't really been able to do anything other than cruise. But it is a very, very, very comfortable to, car to sit in, suspension, very wafty. You can tell that it's firm, but it's not too like intrusive. It's not like that. It's very, you feel some of the bumps, but not all of them. And uh, it's just an incredible place to be. An incredible place to be. A total upgrade from the Audi A1, which I always said was a fantastic interior. But this, this seat right now, looking out, visibility is incredibly strong. We've got the uh, full carbon fiber roof, which is uh, an impressive feature on this car. So there's no light coming in from any sort of panoramic roof, but I do not care. This is a dream come true. Total dream come true. We had to get lunch. <laughs> I'm starving. We've been up since seven o'clock. Because of the white seats, I'm eating outside. My hands are freezing, but I do not want to get the interior dirty, so. You won't even recognize the car. Alright. What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? I'm getting food. <laughs> Mate, I'm just I'm just going to the airfield. Really? Yeah. I've got the whole airfield to myself, so I'm just gonna bum round. Well, you, you're just getting food. Can I come? Come on, let's go, mate! Oh, yeah! <laughs> oh. Firstly, that's freezing out there. Secondly, I don't care about wearing my shoes because we're going back to the airfield that I took my AMG to. There are two positives of buying a second-hand car. Number one, someone has already taken the hit on depreciation. And number two, it's already been worn in. It's a lot easier. I oh. generally feel like I'm on Forza. Yeah, I, I feel I'm in the passenger seat of someone that's playing Forza. <laughs> yeah. But it's good as well, like, at the end of the drift, like, if you just keep it sort of half yeah. locked towards the end and don't come off. So keep it half locked, keep it half locked, keep it like that, keep it like that, and don't go straight. You see what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you go yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Keep, so, so keep that half lock as you go round, keep the throttle in, and then just as you see the car going straight, then straighten it up, yeah, right at yeah, the end. Yeah. And then you don't have the, the car when it's sort of going a bit yeah. wobbly at the end. Oh my God. I am blown away by the balance that this car has. No idea if that makes any sense whatsoever. 
But as a drift machine, I was not expecting this car to be as good as it is, as balanced as it is, and as controllable as it is. You would have seen from the AMG, when I took the AMG onto that airfield, we had very similar conditions. And putting this car, so basically what I've realized is that these three buttons down here, I thought one of them was cruise control, one of them was the suspension. These actually change from comfort to sport and sport plus, and you can customize the entire car setup on these buttons and then obviously click the traction control off as well. So there's so much opportunity to customize the setup on this car. So I basically put it all in Sport Plus and then turned traction fully off. And that was how I was sort of kicking the back end out and sliding it. And for the first time I've ever done that, like this is the first time I've properly driven an M3, to do that on the airfield, I said to Alex after I did that and the camera sort of shut off that it felt so natural <laughs> sideways that it was like I was part of a game. It was that sort of, it just felt awesome. It generally just felt awesome. This video has got a mixture of both. It's got my first few miles, the boring motorway drive down south and then bumping into Archie. Not randomly actually, we, we did plan to meet up, but what a load of fun that was. And this car's potential is unbelievable. <laughs> what have I bought? This is a machine, it's a monster. <laughs> and now we've just got the, the, the heated seats on, we've got all of the temperatures up to 26 and 25.5 degrees and we're slowly polluting the uh, interior of this car with nice warm air because it is now quarter to 4 p.m which means the sun is going down we're losing light and i would just like to say thank you for watching thank you for tuning in thank you for supporting supercars of london and hopefully you've enjoyed this second video the <laughs> first time that i drive this m3 and i've taken it to the airfield i'm addicted to that i'm addicted to that i just want to go sideways all the time but it's also made me realize that the amg is so much more of a handful to control it's really really heavy compared to this car when it's sideways and it's just sort of a little bit more difficult to predict maybe that's because of the power difference in this car and the amg gts uh, but definitely definitely an eye opener i'm gonna have a lot of fun discovering this car with you guys lots more to come on this I'm headed to Dub Customs tomorrow, of course, to nuke it out. So this car is going to be going nuke spec tomorrow. Stay tuned for that video. Thank you for watching. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. If you're a BMW fan, then make sure that you are subscribed to Supercars of London because this now is my daily car and I'm going to be driving it every day. As the... Ah! Wasn't really uh... watching that. <laughs> Thank you for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow. Cheers, guys.